what we get here is you have a 40 year old female who presented with oral erosions and with bulla on the body okay so two things oral erosions and bulla on the body obviously when you're looking at the um, okay very good i already have the uh, answers here yes so i think few of you answered prematurely as bullus pemphigoid i did not give you the characteristic of bulla but even if i didn't if i gave you oral erosions and an image like this please don't think of bullus pemphigoid so when you get oral erosions which are so extensive and put alongside a bulla picture it would be pemphigus vulgaris first of all because some of you answered bullus pemphigoid so i'm clearing out here now, just by the look of the bulla, it is sometimes difficult to say whether it is tense or flaccid. You can make out, but usually in the exam, you would be given. So, flaccid bulla, flaccid bulla, and you can see erosions which are present on the body and oral erosions are a feature of pemphigus vulgaris. Now, whenever you get this set of questions, so you have to look for various pointers. You should be able to differentiate between pemphigus and pemphigoid group of disorders and you should be able to differentiate between PV and PF. Okay, and no important questions about them. So, here I have oral erosion. So, typically a 30 to 40 year old female who presented to you with recurrent oral erosions with bulla which are flaccid. Then what else can they give you? Are these lesions itchy? Usually there will be no itching. And where are they located? They can be located anywhere on the body. So, what they can ask you? The diagnosis which is pemphigus vulgaris. They can ask you what is the target antigen here? So, my target antigen would be desmoglene 3 and desmoglene 1. Both can be the target. However, desmoglene 3, if you have been given both desmoglene 3 and 1 as different options, then you will mark desmoglene 3 as the option. Then, in the similar spectrum, you can get something like this. You have a 40 year old male I'll come to the DIF and biopsy finding let's first look at the clinical findings I have a 40 year old male who has presented with crusted erosions which are present in seboric distribution crusted erosions present in seboric distribution as you see here so you can see erosions but you hardly see any bulla here you hardly see any bulla here and no mention of any mucosal involvement or oral erosions. So, no mucosal involvement, no, no uh, oral involvement. So, yes, you all are right. This is pemphigus foliaceous. This is pemphigus foliaceous, which we all know is a disorder where my desmoglene 1 is affected, where my superficial layer of the skin is affected, where the split is in is subcorneal so since the split is so superficial we do not usually see a bulla we mostly see crusted erosions and since desmoglene 1 is not present in mucosal tissue so we do not have mucosal involvement here clear so an image like this with this history you have to think of pemphigus foliaceous you're right the split will be subcorneal here to be specific so you're right it will be a subepidermal you would not say subepidermal split, you would see say either a subcorneal or an intraepidermal split. Subepidermal split, Simran Kumar, would be below the epidermis. So, this is not subepidermal split. Please remember this. Then we come to this. A lot of you mentioned this. So, they may give you a histopathology image where what do you see? You see a split in the skin which is intraepidermal in the epidermis usually on biopsy it may be difficult to differentiate between pemphigus vulgaris and foliaceous but you can still differentiate if you see a supra basal split if you see a supra basal split it is pemphigus vulgaris and if you see a subcorneal split it is pemphigus foliaceous what is the other finding that you see in biopsy which is very characteristic of pemphigus group of disorder absolutely right row of tomb stone appearance what is that if you look at the 
basal layer you look at the basal layer you see that my cells are separated so they look like row of tombstone appearance so another important finding which is there next coming to this image which is of direct immunofluorescence direct immunofluorescence is the gold standard test to diagnose these disorders so this is a question gold standard test to diagnose my intraepidermal or subepidermal disorders is direct immunofluorescence in pemphigus group of disorders what do you see you see a fish net pattern very good you are all right fish net pattern which is seen in the epidermis so it is like this it's like a net and because desmoglein 1 and desmoglein 3 are present in this intercellular radius so my antigen antibody complex will be formed there so you see a dif which shows fish net pattern another important feature that you get here okay so briefly summarizing this what are the differences between pemphigus vulgaris and foliaceous and how do i remember them so first is where is the antigen so desmoglein 1 in foliaceous and 3 in pemphigus vulgaris where is the split where is the bulla we already know that is the bulla tense Oh, sorry is the bulla flaccid it is flaccid in both but in foliaceous it will rupture soon so you do not usually see a bulla mucosal involvement is only seen in pemphigus vulgaris you will not see in foliaceous and sites we already discussed seboric areas are more commonly involved in pemphigus foliaceous f for foliaceous f for first so desmoglein one first upper hota hai to superficial so it is a subcorneal split so easy to differentiate okay the next in this spectrum you can get an image like this where you would usually be given okay if you haven't touched derma yet yes it would get you some marks in fmg for sure just be with me uh, i would not be able to explain you in full detail but still whatever is there just remember the important points that i'm saying and you will be able to get some marks in derma and you will not be able to get some marks you will get good marks in derma okay so uh, coming back what do i see here here usually the in the history you would be given an elderly female or male so usually an elderly female or male 60 years old female male presenting with tense blisters so if they want you to differentiate between sub epidermal and intra epidermal disorder they will either mention flaccid or tense blister they will either give you histopathology or a dif okay so just by the look they may not give you i don't think so examiners will do that to you okay so they will give you history of tense blisters or they can give you lesions which are preceded by itching or even urticarial lesions so you all have given me answer absolutely right but i'm just telling you what are the pointers that you should be knowing Pemf bullous pemphigoid tense blisters and usually it is preceded by itching or preceded by development of urticarial lesions and elderly a uh, female or male these are the common pointers very good here you have to think of bullous pemphigoid which here where the split is sub epidermal where the split is sub epidermal beneath the epidermis that is why my blisters are tense what is the antigen here bp antigen 1 and bp antigen 2 which is bp 230 and bp 180 respectively okay then what do you see in histopathology you would see a sub epidermal split i am so sorry i forgot to tell you in histopathology in pemphigus group or intra epidermal group you would also see acantholytic cells which are not say, seen here so in this uh, group of disorder here in histopathology you also see these acantholytic cells okay in bullous pemphigoid you would see a sub epidermal split but there will be no acantholytic cells because acantholytic cells are keratinocytes which are there in the epidermis next as i told you dif is the gold standard what do you see here linear pattern of fluorescence so linear pattern which is seen at the dermo epidermal junction is a characteristic of bullous pemphigoid clear absolutely right now 
So, how do I differentiate between my pemphigus and pemphigoid? I already told you elderly age group, tense bullet. Then I have a mnemonic, minar. You remember this and minar is positive in pemphigus and absent in pemphigoid. M for mucosal involvement, I intraepidermal bullet, N for Nikolsky sign, A for acanthocytes or acantholytic cells and R for row of tombstone. All of this is present in pemphigus group, not in pemphigoid group. Okay, quickly revising, Nikolsky sign is when you shear off the, uh, when, when you put a tangential pressure on the skin, there will be either formation of an erosion or a bulla. It is seen in intraepidermal disorders or pemphigus group of disorder, not seen in subepidermal group of disorder. So, elderly, tense and minor. Remember these and you will be able to make it. And in DIF, fishnet pattern in pemphigus group and in uh, BP linear pattern. Clear? Mm -hmm.